Welcome back to Mason Dixon Acres. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to turn a feed bag into a grocery bag. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. First, let's start with the supplies that you're going to need. You'll need a pair of scissors, some type of rigid ruler, so you're gonna use this for measuring and you can also use it for making creases. You will also need a marker of some sort and a sewing machine. You can use any type of feed bag for this project. You can use a chicken feed bag, a goat feed bag, even a wild bird feed bag, anything that you have on hand. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clean out the inside. It's best to do this outside so you don't create a mess. So I had cleaned these prior to bringing them inside. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut off both the top and bottom edges where the string that tied the bag together used to be. You're gonna remove that string and cut an edge so that you remove any of those holes. You'll notice that a lot of the bags that you deal with don't have a straight edge on the bottom of the bag. You can get a straight edge on the bottom of the bag by using a ruler and lining up with the text on the bag itself. So this particular bag, I'm gonna have to actually cut a little bit higher up than right above those holes. And that's because I have a hole in this bag. We had a raccoon or maybe a skunk try to get into this feed. And so I'm going to have to cut above that to remove this whole bottom area. It doesn't really matter because the bag will still be really big and useful for my groceries. Once you've cut off the top and the bottom edge of your bag, you're now going to start making the straps. Each strap is going to be three inches thick, so you have to decide what part of the image you like the best for your bag because you're going to have to get at least six inches of material from a certain part of the bag. With my poultry feed bag, I'm gonna be cutting my straps from the top because I have a lot of extra yellow space up here. And what I care about the most is the picture of the chicken and the duck. On top of the six inches of material that you're going to need for the straps, which for me is gonna come from up here, you're also gonna to have to roll down the top two inches and that's where we're going to be sewing. So keep that in mind as well. In total, you will need eight inches worth of material. So I'm taking my ruler, here's the three inch mark. I'm going to put it here on the edge and I am going to just make a few dots. Rather than draw a full line, I find that it's easier to make a few dots because the black permanent marker will show through if you accidentally leave some of it when you're cutting. As you watch this video, keep in mind that the bag that I'm dealing with is pretty large. If you are dealing with a smaller bag, such as a wild bird feed bag, your measurements are going to need to be adjusted. I'll put some suggested measurements for smaller bags in the description below. So I cut my first strap and I realized that I probably could get away with just using one strip of a three inch piece rather than cutting two for my bag. And since my bag already had limited space and was encroaching on the image that I liked, I'm gonna go with making my straps a little bit shorter so that I can just use this one piece. Now, if your bag is big enough where you can take a strip from both the top of the bag and the bottom of the bag, um, I wasn't able to do that because of my bite here out of the bag. But if you're able to do that, you can go ahead and cut one strip from the top and one from the bottom. But for me, I'm going to experiment with just using this one three inch strip. Once you have your three inch strip, you're going to measure 21 inches. I measured this strip and it's about 20 inches. So I figured one inch shorter won't really hurt my bag. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut mine directly into two pieces and then move forward from there. Once you have your two pieces of three inch material by 21 inches, in my case, it's 20 inches, 
you are going to then fold this like a letter long ways. So you'll fold it here and then here so that it's about one inch total. And this is going to become your strap. So we're going to have to crease this pretty well so that when you're sewing this, it doesn't get caught in the machine. This doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to, you can take a ruler and you can measure one inch, one inch, one inch and mark it somehow and then fold it. But honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I would just fold it and then crease it and you'll be good to go. Once you have your straps folded into one inch strips, you are ready to start sewing. Whenever you're setting up your machine, you're gonna to wanna to set it up on the widest possible stitch. If you have your stitches super close together, this particular material is going to want to rip. So have your stitches pretty far apart and also try to use a higher quality thread than maybe something from the dollar store or Walmart um, because you want something that's gonna have strength with it. I like to keep all of my stitches about 1 16th to 1 8th inch away from the edge of where I'm sewing. Once your straps are sewed, you are now going to take your bag and you're going to turn it inside out. Once it's turned inside out, you are going to find the top of the bag and you're gonna roll it down one inch and then one inch again. Once your edge is folded and you have creased it, you're going to measure six inches from the edge and you are going to make a mark. Now make the mark relatively small because this black marker is going to show through the front of your bag. So I try to just make a dot, do the same thing on the other side, dot, and we are gonna flip this over and do it over here. So six inches. Your strap is going to go on the inward side of where your dot is. So this is my dot here. So my strap is going to be placed inside that dot. Now I'm going to turn this strap and this side of this same strap is gonna go on the inside of this dot. And you can see that this is going to become a handle. So you wanna push this all the way to the edge and I'm just demonstrating what's gonna happen as you're sewing. You wanna start somewhere over here on this corner edge because whenever you backstitch to make the knot, you don't want to show that extra thread somewhere in the middle here where it would be on the front of your bag. So start here, and once you get to this point here where you see your dot, you're gonna start slowing down, you're gonna put in your strap all of the way, and you're gonna continue onwards. Same thing when you get over here. Now this is a little bit different because you have to slow down about an inch before your dot. If you really wanted to, you could move this second dot on the other side to help yourself determine where you need to slow down. But you're gonna slow down, put your strap in, and continue sewing. Once you go the whole way around and do it with the other strap as well, you're going to then fold this back like so, and you are going to finish your stitch, and you're gonna come back and you're gonna start here this time. You're gonna go back around. Now I would recommend going back over here and going around this a second time because you really wanna add strength to where these straps are.
second time around, don't forget to bend up the straps and sew over top of them. Don't forget to sew a third time around so that you get that added strength on your straps. The base of your strap should look like this once you're finished sewing. You can add extra strength to the straps by sewing a square within this square or by sewing some diagonals. The last thing that we're going to do is work on the bottom. So the first part of that is you are going to do a stitch right along the bottom edge of the bag and it's just going to go straight across. You can do two stitches right next to each other to try to reinforce that and make the bag stronger or you can just do the one. So now that the bottom of your bag is sewn, you could leave it as is, but if you want more of a squared off bottom, like most reusable bags that you see and you can buy at a store, what you're going to do is you're going to stick your hand into this bag and you're going to put your finger in it to make a point. And then once you get, you make that point, you're going to bend the bag so it makes a triangle. So you can see here, bent the bag and I made a triangle. Once your triangle is made, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure about five inches across here. So you can make dots, you can draw a line. I'm going to make some dots here. And then what we're going to be doing is sewing across this line. The last thing you have to do after the corners are sewed is turn your bag inside out. And there you have it. You now have made a grocery bag from a feed bag. If you want to, you can go through the entire bag and make the creases more defined. This helps the shape of the bag stay. So I like to go through and make creases along all the edges. so much for watching make sure to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe to our channel for similar videos and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Mason Dixon Acres